Good morning, Pat Zemer here. Welcome to the MagnaWave office hours for this Tuesday morning. We come to you each Tuesday or pretty much each Tuesday to answer your questions and uh, give you the answers that you're looking for with regard to PEMF, training, uh, protocols, machines, whatever it may be. Pre PEMF is a, uh, it's a topic that's uh, in discussion a lot today. Uh, it's a topic, uh, it's a modality that has increased over the years and so certainly uh, as it becomes more visible, more used, uh, has more momentum, there will be more questions and a lot of those questions are going on as you know there's questions uh, there's things taking place right now in the state of New York with regard to the thoroughbreds that we can address if you'd like to talk about that uh, certainly there's uh, things happening in the uh, area of California at uh, Santa Anita and a lot of things need to be discussed there that people are people are talking about so we're certainly here to answer your questions so if you have those questions you can send us a text let me pull that number out 502 599 99722 is a number that you can text. Send me a text to that number uh, with your name and then I will call you back and uh, we can have that discussion uh, about whatever question you would like to uh, have an answer to or that you would like to discuss. Uh, so again, that's text your question or your name to 502-599-9722 and uh, we'd be happy to approach your questions and get you the answers that you're that you're looking for. Okay, I want to look down here and see a couple things coming up. Let me do that real quick. Uh, certainly uh, next week at this time, Monday, next, this coming Monday, I have a meeting with Dr. Oz in New York. Uh, that should be an exciting time to where we will be, uh, he, we were asked to attend of uh, this meeting. Uh, it's a mentoring type of meeting where he would like to have an update on where PEMF is, where PEMF has gone or come as it has grown uh, throughout the years. As you remember, he did a program back in 2011 uh, about PEMF and covered a lot of various topics and it really kind of changed the game for us. Uh, we started back in 2007 and things were fine and we were growing and, and people were learning to, about the therapy but Dr. Oz came along, had the program and really for the first time gave us a stamp of approval for this type of therapy and how it was used. At that time there were probably uh, there were several items that were already FDA approved, but kind of on the back burner, kind of for uh, things that weren't talked about much. But when Dr. Oz had his program in 2011, it really changed the game. It created some momentum. It created somebody for us to say, uh, has validated where we were going. Now, certainly there are questions about that. He's a commercial company and he's doing these programs and, and you know, you can talk about all that all day long. But the reality of it is his program, he had Dr. Pollock on, one of our machines uh, from our manufacturer was shown and talked about on the program. So that was cool because we could highlight that in the, vid in the video and certainly talk about the, the uh, uh, the value of that particular device that was being discussed. Dr. Pollock was with him, who I have often felt is the guru, the, uh, the godfather of PEMF in the country today because as a contemporary and, and someone who's studied it most of his career and been a uh, supporter of PEMF, Dr. Pollock, uh, was a great person to have on the on the program. We have worked with Dr. Pollock over the years and in fact are referencing some of his uh, materials that he produced for us and wrote to us uh, when we had an initial situation with the FEI uh, regarding the devices uh, back in, I don't know, 2000, probably around the same time, 2011, 2012, uh, when the FEI first began to look at PEMF and they compared it to shockwave and that whole thing. I'm kind of rambling there a little bit. But anyway, that program changed things. We were invited to come back and meet with Dr. Oz and mentor about where PEMF has, how, how it has grown, how it is used. Certainly today, a big game changer a couple of years ago was the Optune device when it became FDA cleared and FDA approved for the treatment of glioblastoma brain tumors. Uh, and it has been proven to be a very successful device that it doesn't necessarily cure the cancer or anything like that, but it sure retards the growth, sure helps the uh, reduction of the inflammation of the tumors with that particular device. And people have, uh, many people have experienced very good results uh, as 
after having used and currently using that device. I was at a soccer match the other night, walked into the uh, stadium, and there was a young man uh, going to the soccer game wearing an Optune uh, cap. And it's a cap that they put on. It, it looks like a stocking cap, basically, or the caps that a lot of the people wear today. And it's filled with magnetic coils, and they've got an apparatus they wear, and they wear it all day long. And that's the function of it. And it is, it's a low powered, it's low voltage, low frequency uh, unit that is uh, worn, as I said, all day long. And as you know, that's the primary difference between high voltage and low voltage is the length of time that you utilize it. You can either do it for long periods of time or shorter periods of time. The high voltage machines are shorter periods of time, which fits well in uh, many people's schedule and they don't have the capability of wearing something all day long or it's uncomfortable or whatever the situation may be. So we're next Monday we're going to be with Dr. Oz and uh, uh, going to go to one of his programs that they're taping, uh, meet with him um, privately with a group of uh, four other people and uh, give the updates that he's looking for and we'll see where that goes. Uh, it's not a pitch for the show but it could become a, a show type of uh, question and answer type session that may end and sue at a later time. So we're excited about that. That's Monday, and we'll certainly bring you up to speed on that as we go forward. I'm not sure about Tuesday uh, in a program. It depends how things develop in New York for us, uh, what we'll be doing uh, after the Monday evening um, meeting with Dr. Oz. But so that's what's going on. If you have any questions about that, simply send your question. Send me a text to 502-599-9722. I will phone you back and we can have that conversation. If you have a question you'd like to ask, simply put it in the chat box and we'll take a look at it and give you the answer that you're looking for. Let me see here. I do have a couple of things that a uh, um, person has asked. What about the insurance company many folks are using? It's hands-on trade is the insurance company that a lot of folks are using for um, for their uh, liability insurance. The AOPP, uh, as we've talked about in the past that we're supporting and uh, members of, uh, is going to, as their membership develops, will be able to have uh, they've put things in place to be able to offer insurance directly through the AOPP, which is the Association of PEMF Professionals. You can visit that site at pemfprofessionals.com and uh, be able to um, learn more about the AOPP and, and how it can be of benefit to you as a practitioner. We do have someone that's got a question for us, so let me uh, pick up the phone here and, and uh, come on, can bring it back. Okay, so let's dial. So we'll see what we have going on here. I think I got everything in place. Okay. So we're ringing them up and we're going to have this some other. Christina. Yes, Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave. How can I help you? Hey, Pat. Um, so I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've been trying to work a lot of shows lately. Uh -huh. And I show up and there's other machines there, not MagnaWave, but from other companies. Uh -huh. And when people walk up to me and they say, okay, what makes you better than, you know, the other girl on the other side or with that other machine? Um, how do you go about answering those? Because I don't want to bash at the companies. I'd rather just say why... Magnoid stood out to me, you know? Well, to me, the short, and that's a great question, and certainly everybody has their background, they have their support, and they have their training. Uh, the short answer would be you want to talk about the training that you've participated in, the certification program, the number of people that are supporting you, that if you came in to this particular person's barn and they had a question for you about anything related to PEMF, you could give them an answer. You can go back and search the protocols. I would would pull up if you have the app on your phone I'd open the yeah. app up and I'd go to guidelines and I'd show them here's all the guidelines that we have available to us we're working every day with our training people at MagnaWave to establish guidelines to create ways and protocols to better work with your horses that doesn't mean necessarily that I'm any better than the person across the way but I have got this training uh, no, I don't want to say better. That's a poor choice of words. I need to think that one through. That doesn't necessarily, uh, what that does is that allows me to show you the depth of training that we have at MagnaWave. And so while the therapy is good, you need to select someone that you're comfortable with that has the support that will be beneficial to you as a client. That's what you want to tell. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. Does that help? Awesome. Now, now think, yes, sir, it does. think that through. Uh, this, this will be back up. Perhaps you could watch it again, but that's basically what you want to tell them. You've got a depth of training. You've got a support module behind you. You've got someone that you can call on the spot, which is the case 95% of the time that you could dial the office and talk to Aaron or right. talk to me or talk to Elaine and put it on speaker and let your client hear the support that you have behind them. That's what sets you apart is that you're very deep into what's going on. Other people can tell you that. Ask them what's going on. Ask them the depth. Ask them the support. Ask them how long they've been around. We've been around. I've been doing this since 2002. So you can say we've been involved with this since 2002, which is correct. And uh, that's longer than most anybody uh, in the country. There are people that have been involved with PEMF for a long time and some longer than I for certain but I've been doing it for a long time and learning it and studying it and relaying that information to you as our practitioner right okay awesome thank you so much I appreciate it okay have a great day hey that, it's, that it's it. you too yes sir support at PM magnawave PEMF.com and we'll get you some gear send them a message awesome I appreciate it you're thank welcome you. uh-huh bye-bye okay. You know, that was a great question, and we get that all the time. And, and it, it, it's hard because PEMF is a fantastic modality, and, um, and it's different today because there's a lot of people uh, providing this therapy. So you need, you need something to stand on. You need to be able to say that you, that you have a particular level of, of training and, and that type of thing, and, and you have a particular menu that you follow. A lot of people like the menu at Wendy's, some people like the menu at Chick-fil-A, or they like the menu at McDonald's, or they like what a particular company stands for, or how they like, and so their customers either agree with them or they don't. If they don't, you can't change their mind. If they do, you've got somebody that understands where you're going and what you're doing uh, for the people that you're supplying services to. Great question. Uh, any other questions up there, Brad, that we need to take a look at before I go on? If you'd like to, uh, let me make sure there's nothing else here. Um, nope, just that one message there. Doesn't look like any other questions uh, at this point. So let me go on here to uh, to take a look. Um, there is a question, a uh, person, let me see if I can. Um, apparently we are told that all competitions are banning high voltage PEMF and that the semi versus the example of the Pulse Pro or many other things are out there. Let me be specific. They're not banning high voltage PEMF. That's not what's taking place. The FEI, and the only board that has done this at this point, now maybe some other competitions, CDI and various other competition uh, re regulating boards are going to adopt this same uh, situation, but the FEI came out last, oh, late last year, I believe it was September, I may be wrong on my time, and stipulated that high voltage PEMF devices could only be used at a maximum power of a thousand gauss. And you know that's a whole conversation in its own, in its own. However, uh, there are devices that are high voltage PEMF devices that are available to be used. The semi being one of them that, with certain attachments, does not generate more than 1,000 Gauss. The Gauss is determined by the attachment that you're using. For example, the semi machine uh, with the paddle will produce upwards of uh, three to four thousand gauss with that particular paddle. If you go back to the large loop or the large wave wings or the butterfly, you drop below at a, at specific settings. You drop below or right at a thousand gauss, which meets the requirements of the FEI, the Federal Equestrian International Guidelines. And for years they did didn't have guidelines for years. They said they were going to establish guidelines and it was all over the board as to what could be used. This veterinarian would say this is fine. This veterinarian would say this isn't fine. This show would say you can use it. The other show would say you can't. And so it was just really up and down. It was never ever banned by the FEI. Uh, it was never outlawed or ruled uh, as non-available by the FEI. They simply said that if it's going to be there, it's up to the thing, up to the veterinarian in charge of the competition. Now, with that said, 
last year, they came out with a ruling, 1,000 Gauss. I happen to feel that that's too low. Um, and it could be, it, it, if it was 2,000 Gauss, they'd be better off in terms of really being able to be effective in what we're doing. However, 1,000 Gauss with the right attachments and the right device is excellent. Now, so that means if they enforce the law, in which they, they instituted the law and then people were buying magnetometers at the store and putting them on and saying, well, here's what it's showing me, not knowing what that number was, but it wasn't a thousand. And, and uh, so they were reading it and saying, for example, you could have a magnetometer that reads 792. And if you show it to somebody, that may be 792 or it could be 7,920. You have to understand what the, gap, what the meter is reading, but they were doing things. And so what was happening is all kinds of devices were being used, which is fine. It's the up to the FEI to learn how to enforce their particular ruling. What we did is we learned immediately which one of our devices will fit that ruling. We could back it up. In fact, I've done videos and presented them here showing with the meter that was designed specifically to read these types of, of devices, the, the power output and the Gauss output of the devices. And so we were able to say that our device will meet these guidelines. Now, again, many shows did not follow the ruling or they didn't know what was meant what that meant, what was a thousand gauss, so on and, and so forth. As it gets uh, in line, I presume that, that these shows will more than likely enforce the ruling. With that said, if you have a max machine, that means that you won't be able to use it in the FEI during competition. You can use it right up to competition before they go into the comp competitive area, the fenced area, if you will, or whatever you want to call it. However, once in that area, they can be treated with a device that meets the criteria of the FEI. We have the SEMI, which is a high voltage uh, device that can operate within the guidelines. Now, if you're doing that and you're going to go to those shows and you know you're going to be there for two weeks, call us because we'll get you a machine. We have machines available for that specific purpose. You can take that machine in, rent it for two weeks, go in, use it in those types of situations until you decide you want to have a machine to use in those situations or whatever. But we have you covered. That's one of the things that sets MagnaWave apart. We will have you covered in those situations. If you need something, we will get it to you. I can't say that we've got unlimited supply, but there are not an unlimited amount of shows going on at any one particular time. So typically, this will work for you to get you the solution that you need. And so, but, so to answer the, the question, Bridget's question specifically, to our knowledge, all competitions have not done this at this point. And typically, what they're talking about is the higher level of competition. Again, FEI, CDI, the various upper level uh, regulatory bodies for the upper level competition. The, the moderate levels are the, the, the standard amateur levels, if you will, are the, the professional levels that are not going in competing for points for national awards or national championships. That has not been the case. I don't see it necessarily being the case because they're using these things to keep these horses healthy, to keep them competitively competing in a particular manner, and they want it to, uh, to be successful. So. I don't see it happening in all competitions. When it happened in 2000, actually it was about 2008 when the FEI deal came about, I think, if I'm thinking through it clearly. I was afraid, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? They're not going to let us use this in FEI. I'm done. And, but really what it did is it helped things. I mean, if you've got something that is beneficial to a horse that the FEI feels that it gives that horse an unfair advantage, uh, not, not d downplaying unfair advantage, but it's just a horse that is more capable of performing at its peak than the people on the other side of that thing, raising horses, bringing horses to competition for the first time, saw it as an advantage to use it on their horses, to use it on their riders, to help them perform in a better manner, to better move up the ladder, to get up to the upper echelons of competition. You have to understand in FEI and the upper level areas of competition, they don't allow certain injections. They don't allow other pieces of therapy equipment to be used in those competitions. For example, ice was a big deal and I was involved with this back in the uh, uh, 2000s and, and that was certain ice machines were producing temperatures below freezing 
and the FEI and, and regulatory board says we can't have you freezing joints or taking these joints to the f area of freezing below 32 degrees because that's dangerous. It's not only dangerous for the animal at that point, but it's dangerous in the competitive arena. So then there were companies, Centurion being one, who created the Boreas machine that could regulate and get down only to 34 degrees. So it would not produce a freezing sensation. Those devices were allowed. And, and so it's, there are companies that, are ma that were making machines, I presume they're still there, that would in fact freeze, I don't mean freeze like an ice cube, but bring those kind of temperatures to the area, which certainly would produce a numbing type of result that a horse could run through and injure itself, uh, which you don't want to, to happen. So in the FEI, there's a lot of different things that are not allowed, and that's good. And, and, but on the other hand, you need to, there needs to be a balance uh, that's, that needs to be looked at. And that's what's taking place today in the thoroughbred industry uh, around the country as to some issues that they're, that they're having there, which we can discuss if, if you need to. Let me see if I've had any other calls. Any questions that have come up, Brad, um, to, that I need to uh, take a look at it? Uh, lower back pain. I have a client that is having lower back pain that feels like it's compressed and constantly pulling. They are scared to get PEMF done because they don't want to get hurt. Best way to go about helping? Low. Um, the PEMF is not going to, to hurt someone. Uh, PEMF does not have to be applied at a level that someone would be bouncing off of the off of the of their chair that they're on. And so, basically, there is no pain to PEMF. And if you put the signal into their body and put it on their back at a very and and it's all comfort driven. So what I would do is I'd simply have put the person in a seat, chair, lay them down, whatever's the best. Put the large loop or the butterfly loop, which might be, uh, or the paddle, something small to stimulate a smaller area of tissue. And I would simply very slowly turn it up. I'd maybe do a treatment at something that they barely feel. Do you feel it? Well, I'm hearing it. That's good. But I'm hearing it, but I'm not necessarily feeling it yet. Leave it there for a few minutes. Let them see and feel what's happening, that it's not going to affect them. They'll tell you, I turn it up a little bit more. And, and let me feel a little bit more of that pulsing. And that's good. But always maintain comfort. If you're providing comfort to your customer, you're not going to provide a situation that is detrimental to what, to what they're experiencing. So, and what I always do if I'm treating particularly men, uh, once in a while a woman, uh, a, a man will sit there and I'll be treating their back and they'll say, boy, that's good. Uh, I'll turn it up a little bit more. And so they turn it up a little bit more and I'll say to them, is that comfortable? And they'll say, I can take it. That does, they didn't say comfortable. They said, I can take it. Turn it down. You got to listen and learn to understand what people are saying. I can take it is not comfort. I can take it means you're on the edge and, and we don't ever want to be on the edge. We want to be on the area of comfort to the area of the body that you are working with and treat, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to the area of the body that you are treating. So that's how I would simply go about that, Jenna, as I would... Uh, treat them comfortably. And if they're very sensitive, there are folks that you put this on and you just begin to barely turn it up and they're and they're not they don't know what they're experiencing. Leave it there. Just go a few minutes longer. Put it very low, just go a little bit longer and and they'll get up and then they will feel they will begin to feel a difference. In subsequent treatments they will understand. A lot of times people become frightened of something they don't know. Well don't give them something they don't know. Give them something that they understand which is comfort and then proceed accordingly. You have to understand that even at the lower setting, it's the same type of lightning bolt. We're putting the same energy into the body. We're stimulating the blood cells to be better uh, receptive of the oxygen that's available to them. At a lower setting, it just takes a little longer. That's the whole difference between low power and high power. In the low power units, there is no option. They have to go the long period of time to get the results they're looking for. With us, we can be very low and for an extended period of time. But even as low as we go, for example, the, the, some of our competitor devices that are in the low voltage, low frequency names, 
a range, and you can probably guess some of the names, but they, they operate at 35 Gauss is their maximum output. Our lowest power device that we offer operates at 500 Gauss. So we are, what is that? 14 times more energy, 14 times stronger than some of those low power devices. So it does not, even with those devices, does not take the hour treatment times, uh, twice a day, those types of, of ranges. So you need to understand what we're putting out there, what is available. So it's all about the energy we're delivering. We want to stimulate the cellular membrane to be more permeable, allowing for better oxygenation, better oxygenation, less inflammation, less inflammation, less pain, body in a better position to heal itself. I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to text your uh, name and number to 502-599-9722, 502-599-9722, and I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions and talk with you. I love to do that because we can have a conversation back and forth in those situations that we can go deeper into the uh, topics that we're trying to get. Okay, let's see here. We got one uh, t wanting to take a look. Let me dial it up. And so we'll see what we got. This is from Hazel. So let's ring up Hazel and see what's going on. Good morning. Hey, Hazel, how are you? I'm good. Um, I had a friend that had her wisdom teeth out. Could you give me the protocol for that? Treat it. <laughs> treat okay, it. She had them out yesterday. How, how soon can I treat her? She had them out yesterday, uh, late afternoon. It, it, the same protocol holds for wisdom teeth as with any uh, type of uh, wound that has required opening or bleeding associated with it. Once bleeding is controlled or once bleeding has stopped, then you're free to, to begin to treat. So uh, okay. typically if she had it yesterday, the bleeding probably at this point is pretty well under control or may have even stopped that you could proceed okay. and, and begin treatments. Um, when I had my wisdom teeth pulled you know, three or four years ago, and you pulled up in the, uh, uh, I believe it's on some of the uh, group pages where we can, that are searched, uh, I began treating um, within hours. The bleeding was not totally stopped, but the swelling was really uncomfortable and really getting out of control. So I made the, uh, made the decision, I wanna work on the inflammation as long as bleeding does not get any more severe than it is. And, okay. and, and that was the position that I took. But as a rule, you would wait till bleeding is uh, under control. In my case, the bleeding did not change by using the device did not produce more bleeding. So uh, my bleeding actually stopped in the time that they told me it would stop and I was able to work on the inflammation along the way. And so you just okay, need so to, to take I a look. Did I use the, the large loop over her head or use the butterflies next to her jaw? And not sure. I would maybe first time out I'd put the large loop over her head and, and, and uh, where it's resting on her shoulders and coming like this and you're going to be okay. you're going to be penetrating into the jaw area where she had the, the teeth or tooth pulled and and you can stimulate it very comfortably from that type of position then as you go I'd hold the, the, the large loop either over the over the not the large loop but the butterfly loop over the area like this or over the area in this fashion. And um, there's Lainey, Lainey knows we're on the air and she's calling. Maybe she wants to talk to me, I should have answered the phone. But, uh, so at any rate, uh, that's how I would approach it. I'd come this way to begin with and then over the, the jaw as you proceed. All right, sounds that, great. Does that help? Okay, uh, support, it support magnawavepmf.com, we'll get you some gear. All right. Thank you, Pat. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. If you have any other questions, just put them on the chat box. We do have another call that would like to uh, talk with us. Let me bring this up. Okay. This is Janet. Janet's calling. Got some questions for us. Morning, Stephanie. Stephanie. This is Pat Hi. Zemer with MagnaWave. How are you? It says Janet on the phone here. You must, but that's okay. What's up? Talk to me. This is Janet. Um, is there any way or will there be any way to bypass the timer? I'm using the Wave Pro 
Uh -huh. which is now the O, isn't it? And at the very lowest setting, for instance, I'd like to sleep with it so it would last longer than 10 minutes. Oh, boy. Um, you know what? Um, that is a very good question. Um, and the the short answer is yes there is a way to because that's a computer generated machine computer operated machine uh -huh. and there is a way to program that um but it would require some special programming uh and and we, we are in in in, in fact in a position in a area where we're redesigning the membrane switches on some of these devices where we can add some other variances so technically mm -hmm. it could happen could it happen easily on your device at this point I'm not sure um, but that is an it is an excellent uh, question and, and I understand and agree with you at on the lower setting on the on that device would be great to be able to have it run for longer periods of time and that's the first time someone's asked the question uh, when we get into those area of devices and and we are making notes of it as as we speak and we will certainly uh, uh, pursue that um, great question and I, I don't have an answer but we will take a look at it and see what we can do so should I perhaps email it to you so you could put it on your agenda maybe for that'd be great in the future? That'd be great. We program. did write it down. Uh, we have a whole of, uh, plethora of people in the room with me this morning and uh, we did write it down and but if you'd like to send an email that that makes it more uh, uh, recordable and uh, we will we will certainly uh, take a look at that. And you know what I would suggest, and and what I have done in in some cases, uh, if you do, you do you watch TV when you're getting ready to go to bed or watch in bed TV in bed yeah. at all? Yeah. What I would recommend initially is that you treat yourself for the hour or so that you're watching TV, and then maybe just before you're finished, you know, you turn things off, and maybe do one more one more cycle. That way, you don't really need to go all night, but. Mm -hmm. where it would be beneficial to go for a longer period of time. Um, I know it's a pain to to keep uh, turning the machine on, but we're going we're gonna to do some looking. Okay, great. Uh, Thank all right. you. Thank you so much. Support at magnawavepmf.com to get you some gear. Great. Thanks, Pat. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. You know, that is a, that is a great question uh, as folks think about different ways that they want to utilize the device. That is one of the features that's available on the B2 machine, the brain and body, uh, the low power magnetic machine. It does have the capability of running for eight hours uh, in, in a situation where someone would want to, to sleep with it. And in fact, I in, do that and uh, use it in that fashion uh, to uh, treat various areas that I uh, want to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm on top of. And I'm doing this as a test just to see if it does uh, how it does compared to the, to the other units. And that is something that we're doing just to throw this in so you understand this with our FDA uh, tests that are ongoing now, the three, the three studies that are in, uh, in process, we're doing, we're doing those studies with three different levels of machines a high power, a mid power, and in fact, a very low power device. Uh, so we can show the results from all three machines at various power levels, speed of result, retention of result, those uh, is the result there uh, with varying devices for varying indications. So we, we, because there's been a lot of things over the years where someone, and people say when they have a competitive machine that does not go into high power range, what's the logical thing to say well you don't you don't need that power that power is not beneficial da -da, da 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 and then you turn around and you see the same kind of results with high power machines and you say well yeah it does well so uh, we've taken the position that we want to put this out there let's let's see what are the differences between low power medium power and high power. Now, with that said, our lowest power device is 500 Gauss, which is 15 times stronger than most of the low power competition out there. But again, we, there's plenty of studies that show what the low, low power stuff does. We want to show through our studies where we are on the low power, medium power, and high power devices. So I hope that's uh, clearer and, and understanding. Let's see if we have another one. Uh, we do. So let's see if you have a question. Uh, put it up and we'll take a look at it but I do have another caller here so let's do this and
and dial it up. And ooh, we're moving right along time. We started a little late. Uh, we were talking this morning. We may change our start time a little bit here in the, so we, it's easier to deal with. But let's see what we've got here. This is uh, Rianne. Hello. Hi, Rianne. Hey, <laughs> I think you were in the process of um, answering my question uh, with the low intensity, high intensity, low power. Okay. I'm just, um, for some reason, it's just not quite clicking with my brain on the difference between the intensities. I, when I, before I bought my, my Pulse Pro, I demoed the semi mm -hmm. and, or the semi, and I had a lot of people who were saying, well, they didn't even feel it. And then when we tried the, the Pulse Pro, it was like, okay, you could feel it when you turned it up. So I'm just trying to really understand and be able to explain the difference in intensity. When I'm turning it up, is it going deeper? Is it stronger? Or that's just reducing the amount of time we work? Well, it, all of that. It, it is, in fact, going deeper. It is, in fact, stronger. and in fact, reduces the length of time that you need to, to do it. Uh, the, the strange thing is, is people like to feel something happening. And, and they just do, you know, you, when you when you go buy a new chair, you like to see the vibrance of the color in your room. I mean, people like to feel something or see something, something taking place. And so that is certainly a difference. The fact that they don't feel it, and, and here, and I'll go into a little bit difference of the signal as well, and, and it, you, you think it's tough to get your head around this, wait a minute. But, uh, it, it, People like to feel it, and with the with the semi machine, they really don't feel it until you get up to the higher setting, and and but doesn't mean that it's not working at a lower setting. Um, you you follow me there, but yeah, they're with, still getting the energy whether they feel it or not. That is correct. They're still getting the energy where they whether they feel it or not. So, but when you get into the the Pulse Pro device, certainly they're going to feel it now. Why they feel it sooner on the Pulse Pro than they do on the Semi is because of the signal. The signals are the same. They both go up and they both come down very rapidly. That's where the healing power has been discovered uh, with that type of signal by Dr. Bob Dennis in the NASA study. It's the slew rate or how quick they fall off on the bottom. But as they go up, the, this, one, this will be analog, this will be digital. So as they go up, the analog system is at a point, the digital system rounds off a little bit and then they fall down. So they go up, the one goes to the point, the one rounds off and then they fall straight off. The one that is rounded is more comfortable initially. I mean, it just naturally goes into the body a little easier as far as comfort is concerned. Well, on the lower settings of the digital machine, which means because it's rounded, you don't feel it as much or as rapidly as you do on a pointed signal. Okay? Now, with that said, what happens is sometimes with this pointed signal, it becomes, it'll, it'll reach the area that someone can become potentially uncomfortable sooner than they will with the rounded signal. So in some cases with the rounded signal, you can get a little more energy comfortably, which would, which would be the situation in the Maya and, and some of those devices. However, again with that said, most people like to feel something more rapidly and they get the result that they're looking for from that situation. I, 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 does that help at this point? It's, yeah, it does. Um, it, it, and so that's, that's the way to, to explain it. it. I always say, and, and maybe you've heard me say this before, the energy is the same. Each signal is identical. The difference is it's like a lightning bolt. You go outside and stand on the front porch during a storm and you see, you look down the way or you look across the horizon or across the sky and you see lightning just going crazy but you're not hearing it. 
you're seeing it, but you're not hearing it. Then all of a sudden, the bolt of lightning hits across the street, uh, a street down. Not only maybe you don't see it because of the trees, but you hear it. You almost feel it, the energy that's coming from that bolt of lightning. That's the difference. When you turn it up, the lightning bolt is closer. When you turn it down, the lightning bolt is down the way. It's the same lightning bolt. It's the same type of energy. It's just a little farther away. Your, that lightning bolt, if it's raining, if it's raining uh, away from you and you come outside an hour later and it didn't rain where you are, you still a lot of times breathe that freshness that, that of the rain. You, you feel that right. freshness of the rain. So it still is working. Even though it's away from you, you're still receiving the energy. You're receiving the freshness that comes from it. And so that's the primary, the primary difference between the two. Just rest in the fact okay. that people like to feel it. Just make sure they're comfortable. Does that work? Um, do we have time for one more? Yeah. We do. Do, do. We have, do you have time for one more question? We do. Okay. Um, so you posted a thing about being very knowledgeable and understanding in the difference between the EMFs and the safe ones and like the healthy ones and then the unhealthy ones like the cell, cell waves and right. all that stuff. I had a thought about the the unhealthy ones are like those man-made cell towers and power lines and microwaves and radio waves. But what's the difference between our machines, which are also man-made, and the other man, like, I guess I don't know how to ask this question. Well, okay. <laughs> Here, here's, here's the thing. The, the type of signal becomes the issue. And those man-made forms, when you pick up your cell phone and you hold it up to your head or your ear, it, it doesn't pulse. If it did, you'd hear, hup, 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 yep, you, that's the signal you'd be hearing from the person talking to you. You hold it up to your head and you get a constant signal from that device. The high power wires outside, you get a constant, it's, it's like a flood, it's like a waterfall coming off of that particular device. Our device would be like a, like a misting rain. You get a drop, you get a drop, you get a drop, okay? That's not going to make you wet. That's not going to make you soaking wet. And, and so, and then quickly it dries and it's gone. Whereas with the waterfall, you get totally soaked and, and it takes an hour for everything from to your shirt to your undergarments to your socks to your shoes or longer to dry. And so it's the type of wave that you're receiving from those things. Your microwave is very powerful when it runs for three or four minutes to do something and you happen to be standing right in front of it looking at it. Our uh, TVs are different today than the old tube TVs, but to, stand, to sit in front of a computer is putting a signal into you continuously as you're sitting in front of it. Our signal, on the other hand, is a nanosecond burst of energy that goes in and stops. So you have to, and, and this is device specific, but just for our conversation, you would need to put your coil over your head and turn the machine on for 17 hours to get one second of the exposure you get from a microwave or a microwave tower. Uh, and now that's mathematically uh, Ca calculated. So in reality, what I always tell people, 17 hours for a minute. People can wrap their head around a minute. And, and, but that's the difference. So it, it is a signal. It is electromagnetic signal, but at the dosage level that we're putting into the body, we're putting it in in such a, it, it will not heat the body. It, whereas you get too close to other things, you, you can create heat. MRIs, for example, you can only be in an MRI tube for a specific amount of time. And you can only, in some tubes, you can't have any metal. You can't, you know, so metal implants or all those kind of things because the, the intensity of the power from an MRI tube, which is required in order to measure what they need to measure, we're not doing that. We're not measuring those things, so we don't need that continual exposure of power. So that's, that's the primary difference. It's the continual signal, the continual exposure. Uh, it, it, a smoke, you, you got a fire in a house, you can't be in there uh, inhaling the smoke because it, it, it'll, it'll kill you. I mean, it, it'll do that. But you can go into a fire, retrieve something, and come back out, and you're okay, right? So 
though those kind of things are how you, and how you can think about that and when you come to explain that to someone the smoke is a good example the the uh, lightning bolt is a good example the, the misting rain as opposed to a waterfall uh, and, and you know a waterfall can knock you down a misting rain is not going to knock you down does that help yeah, so what's the difference yeah but how is like with the signal that we're putting into the body from our machine what makes that healthy like i understand the it goes I, and then it stops and it goes that that is time. that is an yeah. excellent question what makes that healthy i, I want to say this i want to say this properly the signal is not unhealthy but what the signal does is it penetrates the body to stimulate at a cellular level cellular activity that allows for better oxygenation and health of the cell which is healthy so the signal creates the activity in the body to produce a healthy result the signal would be unhealthy if it went in there and stayed didn't go off for a large period of time that's not a good signal but a signal that goes in and says hello you water your plants you water your plants for 20 minutes and the plant gets healthy gets the water it needs if i sat out there and watered that plant for three hours i'm going to drown the plant it's it's going to be too water saturated it, it, it you follow me so it's not that the signal the, the signal itself is not dangerous because of the way it's produced the way it goes in we don't put it in a, a dangerous state would be a signal that does not stop at our power level that would be dangerous but a signal that that is intermittent as i said 17 hours to get a minute worth of exposure it but what the signal does do the gas you put in your car you can't drink but the gas you put right. in your car produces a result that your car can move safely down the street with air conditioning making you comfortable so it, it, it the, so the gas as long as we don't consume it and we don't consume it you can pump gas into your car and, and inhale the fumes and you're okay but if you put your head down to the thing where you're putting it in it for 10 minutes you're not okay so it's it's the it's the it's the manipulation of what's happening that creates the the happy pleasant result. Okay, that makes sense. It, it's it's it, take this one also. You you got your receptacle on the wall. We don't give our children uh, hair uh, uh, what do you call those things that goes on paper paper clips and allow them to stick it into the thing. If they stick it in the thing, it's going to knock them. They're going to learn real quick. But it, the you know it's just you got to be careful in what you do and how you use what you're using. Okay. Does that help? That does help. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Support magnawavepmf.com. We'll get you some gear. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Have a great day. Bye-bye. That was a great question, and uh, sometimes I get going on my answers, and I hope I made uh, sense of that I overwhelm myself. Not overwhelm, but sometimes I just I've got to – I get to talking and I forget what I'm talking about sometimes because I'm, yeah. so anyway are we about out we had a question we had a question um, okay uh, on a different page here uh, a client is uh, getting her shoulder work uh, after uh, chemotherapy how long after chemo should she resume shoulder treatment <coughs> excuse me once the and, and of course now we can have a question we can have a comment about outside of the united states and inside the united states but at any rate uh our position in the united states is that if someone is uh having chemotherapy and they and they had chemotherapy today 24 hours uh 48 hours something like that 24 to 36 hours letting it get out of the system uh so you don't uh, have any adverse effects from it or whatever but 24 hours let it do its job let it get assimilated metabolized into the body and then you can resume treatments uh, with no issue there are doctors in the United States there are people there are some studies that are being discussed and planned to use this type of stimulation this type of, of enhancement to chemotherapy at the same time the reason we don't treat during chemotherapy the reason we always default to the doctors it, it's always important to work with the doctor they make the decisions their directs all we're doing is supplying a level of energy to the body for comfort and, and pain relief 
and let the body better perform to heal itself. Now, with that said, there are some doctors who are sit, sitting back and saying, look, if this does not make my patient uh, feel ill as a result of having this treatment while PMF care, PMF uh, are, are during uh, chemotherapy, let's let's try it let's see what happens uh, that's what's happening with the momentum of of this today is and how doctors are taking a look at it how people are using it in studies to see what can what can happen our position is we are delivering energy to the body uh, mechanical stimulation for comfort and wellness and you know it, it's the same thing there's a lot of things that doctors are going to tell you not to take or not to do if you're taking a particular medication you always want to check that no matter what's what you're doing uh, somebody you know so you, you mess up your ACL you don't want to work out for a period of time you may have some therapy that you do with it but you want to limit what you do so you don't damage what they have done or what they're trying to do with you uh, in your uh, uh, st as you're striving for health and wellness uh, in your life and body great question anything else anything else Brad uh, we're actually uh, out of time uh, today if there's nothing else uh, actively on the board we're good okay uh, gee we didn't get to uh, the, the conversation on what's going on in the thoroughbred world at this point uh, in some of the various jurisdictions of thoroughbred horse racing uh, which we will do uh, we're going to pre create some videos today and some response and talking with some doctors and people about uh, our position on those particular questions and activities and to uh, move forward in that area so thank you uh, for being with me this morning I always enjoy being here look forward to being with you if not next Tuesday because we'll be in New York the following Tuesday to answer your questions about MagnaWave PEMF training certification whatever it may be wave on for better health have a great day thanks a lot bye bye